Enough humor. Sorry. I just want to go over some quick things that we're going to be have coming up, and then Elise will take over. Um, I put in some dates for plein airs this year. Okay, we didn't do plein airs last year, uh, and after all the years that we've been doing plein airs and the things like that, I decided to put down some plein air dates. We're going to have seven of them. We're looking at April. May, June, July, August, September, October, because our November has become real busy. Okay, we had talked at our meetings about doing this. I put in some places, okay, and I know you're going to laugh about one of them, but you will be surprised, okay. Um, one of them is going to be on April 29th. <clears throat> I'm picking the third Sunday of the month, relatively, okay. Try not to interfere with anything else we have down. I sent this out to all of the board members. If anybody else wants them, they can look at them. Um, does everybody know where Elves Pond is? No, Elves Pond is in the middle of Winchester. Uh, excuse me. Oh. Elves Pond is in the middle of Melrose. I'll get my bearing straight. You know, if you're going down Main Street, you know the Wakefield Hospital is? Right across the street, there's a gazebo. That pond in there is Elves Pond. The area that we're going to go down is you go down a side street. And you get down where there's this ballpark, there's, um, oh, there's all these different sports the kids are doing, plus the pond with the trees. So you can paint anything you want. If you want to paint people or draw people, uh, photograph the pond, whatever. You know, we always have a fun time. May 27th is Cox Reservation. Everybody knows where that is, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, Cox Reservation is in Essex. It's a fantastic place where all artists go. Who, was it Don Stone that used to have the... Uh, I can't remember his name. He used to have the, um, he used to do his lessons in the barn there. It might have been Don Stone. Was it Don? Because Caleb is still up at Rome. Oh, there. Caleb, yeah. Caleb is all around and stuff like that. Um, okay, this is the one you're going to laugh at. Does anybody know what Bradley Danvers is? I uh -huh. read your thing, so. You read my thing. You know what it is. Okay. Um, just so that you know, I'm going to tell you a little story about it, okay? It's Danvers State Hospital. It's not the hospital anymore. They're actually apartments, but the building is there. So I'm going to tell you this really small, silly story. When I was a kid, my grandfather was in the hospital. Now, if you're facing the building, everybody knows what it looks like, correct? If you're facing the building, on the left-hand side is where all the people just go there to rest. My grandfather had a stroke and he wanted to rest and this and that. So he was on the left side, the windows were open, this and that. If you go to the right side, okay, uh, you don't want to, you don't want to be on that side, I guess, or unless you're a doctor trying to help people out with this and that, actually. When I went into the front office, I was looking for him, and one of the residents, used, I guess, worked the front desk that used to be in there or something, so she said, Chester is down this hallway, and she pointed to the right. And I started going, because I had some clothes and stuff, and clean clothes for him, and I was going to bring it to him. And she said, oh, 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 she's knocking on the window, and I, I turned back, I said, what, what? She said, you're going to need something. And she stamped a white piece of paper for me. Okay. So I went past, past the first door. Now, if you ever saw these corridors, they are tall, and when you close the door, boom, you can't open them. So I, I didn't know that. I just kept going down the hallway until I come all the way down the end. This part disturbs me a little bit, and I'll explain why. I went into this one room, and if you see them, the pictures of them, you go online and see them, the old pictures, by the way, of this rounded room at the end. Um, in those days, if you were gay, you had a mental problem. That's where they stuck all these poor people who obviously didn't have mental problems, that they were gay. Some of them might have had, because I walked in there and some of them were coming all over me and this and that, and what I mean by that was like, seeing what's in the bags and this and that, you know, not really leaving me alone. So I was just, I was talking to him, I said, hey, you can't do that, this, that, because, you know, it doesn't bother me um, that way. And all of a sudden the door opened, a gentleman comes in who has a white coat on, and he looks at me, he says, you're not supposed to be here, are you? And I said, I don't think so. I said, this is where the woman at the front desk told me. She said, he said, did she give you anything? I said, oh, yeah, she gave me this paper. And he went, okay. <laughs> he 
I handed him that little piece of paper and he said, follow me. And he took me away and he brought me into the other section where my grandfather was. <laughs> I know the hospital pretty well in some circumstances. I used to visit there a lot and go down other areas too. Um, although I know people like maybe Rick, Ricky here still thinks I should be in there, although it's an apartment now. However, if you haven't seen the grounds, it's incredible. It's this beautiful, beautiful old historic building that's still there. It's just on a nice clean uh, area now. They cleaned up the area. They still have, if you go online and read the stories about it, there is a cemetery down the right where they used to put these people. <coughs> Horrific stories what they used to, used to do these people in those days. <coughs> Anyhow, I'm just there to paint this incredible building. <coughs> Excuse me, or photograph it. So that's going to be a really nice day. Belle Isle Marsh, there was, <coughs> why is Mary here? Speaking of. Mary was with us, Rick, right? When we did Belle Isle Marsh. Beautiful place, it's in East Boston, where the old um, Suffolk Downs Drive-In Theaters used to be. Beautiful area, nice <coughs> marshlands and stuff like that. Um, good Harbor Beach, <coughs> in the middle of the summer, <coughs> where you bathing soon. There's some beautiful areas up there to paint and draw. Uh, just people, or yeah, whatever the case may be. It's, it's gorgeous up there. September 23rd, I'm thinking Minuteman National Park, <coughs> over in the Concord side. <coughs> okay? <coughs> Finally, which we like to do every year, and I think you'd like it even more than anybody, is Heimlich's. They all have flowers know, and all this. I didn't make it the last time we I know. Went. You, I was really bummed. It's your type of thing that she loves yes. flowers and stuff, and macro photography and all this and all that. They have some gorgeous stuff there, including this barn that's falling apart with a tractor and stuff. Great stuff to photograph and, and <coughs> obviously paint. Before I, <coughs> before I come, fall on the floor, <laughs> I'm going to let Elise take over. Elise is going to tell you about a Go few things. Go get yourself different. something to drink over there. <clears throat> so I can choke more? No, no, thank you. Oh, that's mine, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Well, welcome everyone. Good evening. Um, before I introduce Mary Taggart, we have upcoming in April 12th on Thursday, Isabel Valvan. She's going to be doing professional modeling standpoint. So how to like, what an artist, what an artist, what an artist and model looks for when she comes up here <coughs> and she models and poses for us to paint or draw or whatever we're going to do. And, um, May 10th, we have Donna Howard, and some of us know her from here before. I don't know her. Art Exploration of Negative Space. And June 21st, of course, is our annual potluck and business meeting, and bring your appetite and the guest. So tonight we have Mary Taggart is going to do some oil painting, and she's right there. So that's me. So, um... Just a little bit about me. Um, I'm happy to be here and meet you all. I um, probably, like most of you, have been doing art work since I was very small. And um, it, I actually came serendipitously, met up with my childhood art teacher, hmm, I don't know, maybe it was like 20 years ago now. Turned out she was teaching around the corner from my house. So we reconnected, and she was. it was so great to see her again. And, you know, since I did wind up going to Mass Art and taught and got away from it for a little while and eventually came back to it and now I have my studio in Wakefield where I do my own work but I also teach others as, and I do children and adult classes. Oil paint has been my medium of choice but interestingly enough the last, I don't know, like six, eight months I have been experimenting in gouache. Has anybody ever used gouache? It's very much like acrylic paint. Um, it's like a cross between acrylic paint and watercolor. You can make it be like watercolor, but if you use it directly, it's like acrylic. But it's a very matte finish, and that's the one thing that I love about oils is it is not a matte finish. It's got a vibrancy that the gouache really doesn't have. It, the gouache can almost look like a silk screen, actually, when you're done. So, um, anyways, a little bit about my education. I obviously been at Mass Art. I've studied with um, people such as, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of George Nick. He was um, he's a nationally known painter and he 
was the chairperson of the painting department at Mass Art, but I actually studied with him after he had retired from Mass Art. He still shows nationally. Uh, his work is in many museums, and I've studied with a, uh, someone who was his student and then became uh, another teacher in the university circuit. Her name is Catherine Kehoe, and Catherine Kehoe is, I would have to say, do you know her? Where is she from? <laughs> That's my last name. Oh, you're kidding. No. She now is, she was from, I think, Dorchester or Jamaica Plain, okay. and she now lives in Rehoboth. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Our relatives were from Stone. Oh, okay. But she um, really was a stickler for value and, and mixing correct color. And I studied with her for about five years and never got tired of her approach, and it's translated into my work now all the time. So what I'm going to do, I brought this tonight, not that flowers are my favorite thing, but it, I like occasionally. I wanted to bring something that I could have some value change and some interesting shapes. And, and um, I always like to have some kind of a background color to establish a value, <clears throat> a value relationship. I'll be painting with oils. This is actually gessoed watercolor paper. For those of you that do a lot of painting, like me, Sometimes you get tired of stacking up canvases, especially if you're experimenting. So I buy um, cold pressed watercolor paper and I gesso it. And then it will stand up to, to the test of time. And so big pieces of paper, I, I tint the gesso because then I have a neutral ground to work from. And off I go. But you, right, you do both sides or just one? Just one. And if, it stays It stays, stays yeah. Um, some, sometimes it gets a little bumpy, but you know, for my purposes it's okay. The other thing I use a lot, or I use these panels, okay. birch panels, and of course these a lot of times you might have to do both sides um, because they can warp a little bit, but these take like what, three coats of gesso and you have to sand in between if you want to have it be a, a decent surface. Um, my brushes, I use primarily flats. I do have a filbert with me tonight, but I use primarily flats because of the way I paint. I there's a lot of flat shapes bringing color on, you'll see. Um, so tonight I hope you don't have too high expectations because we're not, I'm not going to come back and work on this again. I'm just going to show you my process and how I lay in the paint to bring this three-dimensional object into a two-dimensional surface. Okay? One, one more question? Mm -hmm. I always ask this. Yeah. Okay, please forgive me. Um, primary or dual? Uh, on your palette, primary colors, dual I, colors, I, and I have um, two yellows, two reds, two greens, two blues, and my white. And I actually threw in um, one more red tonight just because of, to try to get that. But I don't have a magenta, so I won't be doing that color exactly. But I pretty much use a simple palette. A lot of times I might just put one, 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 but to, uh, usually it's two, two, and two. Warm and cool. Warm and cool of okay. each. Yep. And um, I'm using a, obviously, a dis I use a disposable palette. This is my setup when I go out to paint plein air. I, I uh, was telling Joe, or I, I, on the way in, uh, or the, or the yeah. time you too, that um, I live up in Rowley now, and I moved a couple of years ago, and I love the marshes. So I go out to the marshes, and I did a series a year ago. I did the whole year. And I was out at the marsh a few weeks ago painting, and so my approach now is four small ones. Like, I'll drop, divide that into four sections and do four small paintings, and by then I'm cold enough that it's time to go. But um, it's really great to have this set up. It's the same thing I use. I just put up everything on my back in my backpack, and that's all I need. And um, take in, take out. If you're doing plein air, you know you don't leave anything behind, you don't dump your solvents. The only thing about oil painting is the solvents, a lot of people have issue with them. Even though you can't smell this tonight, it is still a solvent. And just because something is odorless doesn't mean it's okay for you to be breathing it all the time. So I say, and the other thing is gloves. You know that the cadmiums are not really good to get on your skin. So if you're painting a lot, you don't want those making contact with your skin. Now I know what's wrong with it. Yeah. Well, there's a theory. Oh, no comment. Jeff. There's a theory about all these artists that, you know, became insane or whatever, that they were really poisoned by their paints. So there is that theory. I don't know how much I buy into that. But, they, you know, I do know some people that have gotten ill and have switched their medium because they decided they couldn't deal with this anymore. I've heard it does go through your skin. Yeah, so. it does. It does. 
Um, I usually use a viewfinder, whether I'm out in the, you know, in the marsh or here. And the viewfinder is just so I can relate my, um, do you guys use viewfinders when you work? You do? Okay. So this viewfinder. So I'm always using a viewfinder. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if you, you know, if you, like, so I'm looking at this and I'm saying, okay, how am I going to block this in? I usually do a quick thumbnail or two just to kind of figure out how I want to use my surface. But obviously, um, this is almost, when I look at this, it's almost a square. And this is a rectangle. So I'm going to break the edge most likely. I'm, I'm not going to plunk that right in the middle. And for my purposes tonight, I think what I'll do is just use a little acrylic to sketch it in. Because it'll dry quicker. So um, some people always start with an underpainting. I don't do an underpainting usually when I'm outside. But a lot of times working in a studio and underpainting is a, is a good thing to do. Because you can establish your value relationships right away. So, as you can see, I don't really have any small brushes. Um, so right now, I'm just going to decide where do I want. I think I'm going to put my can over here, over more towards the side. And, and then again, I can decide, okay, is this, then this will be the tallest. This will be over here. This will be coming here. So when I look at this, I'm thinking, okay, is this how I want my composition? To go. And I'm, I'm okay with that for our purposes tonight. If I was in my studio, I might move the flowers around, I might change the backgrounds, but for right now, I'm, I'm okay with that. So the first thing that I'll do is just, I, I squint a lot because then I can say, okay, this is the, this right here is my darkest value. And right in here. spaces where these flowers are going to be. And this is just, just my like, kind of note taking. So you can start to see where I'm going with this, right? Okay, so this guy is coming right out top. This is right here. Does anybody, you can ask me questions while I'm doing this because I do not expect this to be any great shakes of a painting because I'm talking the whole time. So if you have questions or if you, you know, in any, um, so, okay. so this is the tallest. Can you see up in there? It's, 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 just, very, you know, it's just very apropos. Right, because it's certainly not uh, this real detailed drawing. Um, I just really want to think, where is everything going on this surface? So my next step right here would be to put in the darkest values. And that's when I pull out my palette knife. I'm a big fan of a palette knife. Do you use a palette knife? Yeah. So, um, you know, a lot of people like to mix with their brush. But I feel that if you're mixing with a palette knife, you really get much stronger, better color. I use everything. I mean, you do. Yeah. Palette knife is one of them, but yeah. I even use fingers. You do. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I'm gonna with mix. Gloves, I don't. Huh? That's why I said I don't. <laughs> gloves? I don't. Do it you don't with gloves? gloves? Oh. Mm -hmm. well, I don't want to be cleaning off my hands later, I guess. 
So, so I'm mixing a, a very deep green, and I'm going to just put in a few spots because in oil painting you want to lay in your darkest colors first because it's really hard to put them on top of the lightest colors. Once you start to have whites and yellows in your colors, um, the, there's a lot of oil. So to put a darker color on top, it, it doesn't work. You have to work from dark to light. So let's see, I'm gonna put this in here. So on oil painting, do you work dark to light? Is that what you said? Yep, um, pretty much I do, yeah. Oh, okay. Watercolor is from light to dark. Yeah, I knew that. But, but oil, acrylic is always dark. Right. Although acrylic sometimes it doesn't matter. Because you can go back in yeah, anytime you want. Ten minutes. Right. It's always dry so fast. So and now I'm gonna switch into some lighter greens. But actually, I think what I'm gonna do before I do that is think about the background color. And I do have a brownish color down here and a grayed down yellow. So if we're gonna gray down our yellow, then we need to put a purple, purple tone to it. To grade it down, so I don't put pearl, purple on my palette. So I'll add some red and blue to this yellow. Actually, I'm gonna have to put up some more yellow already. This is closer to the burlap. And a lot of times I'll do this and I'll squint and I'll say, okay, yeah, I, that's pretty close. When I put my palette and I write out, I can see that it works to reflect that color and that value. Okay. And I don't really use a medium much. Can you say much? Um, I had, you know, a little bit of oil sometimes, but mostly not. Just Lindsay? Yep, it's that. This is just the Gamsol, so, yeah. you know, straight paint. So you like Gamsol, then? Yep. Yeah. But I, use, I like to use a lot of different mediums for different things. Yeah, I don't do too much with that. I know a friend of mine does. She, she uses a lot of different things. That's just not how I work. So I just put a little, I'll just put a little more white right here because it is a little lighter right here. Coming from where I sit. Back here also. I'm switching to mix it with my, there's a cool shape right in here that I see. That's the technical term, cool shape. So. <laughs> I try to find those. Yes, I know. It's like, oh, look at that. All right. So. I love how to have that hanging like that, but we can make it simple, but yet it's very effective. What? The background. Just a simple background. Just, I have just, you know, just want to have something for a contrast, right? Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, you're like, what do I do with the background? So. I always have hard times with backgrounds. I don't know why. So what I think I'm going to do with this background, because this, I made this a little more yellowy, I think I'm going to probably gray this down a little bit more. So, excuse me while I just grab yellow. I think I'd go through that that fast. Okay. You mostly like to keep your front warm and your, your back cool? What does it matter? Yeah, it doesn't always matter. I, 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 you know, I'm not, I don't get as caught up. My teachers, let's put it this way, weren't always talking about temperature. They were more talking about value. Yeah. So that you know, they're like, if it's if it's um, a dark value, it's probably going to be more cool if you're tr really trying to look at the color. Mm -hmm. So, Let's make a gray, and I don't have a black on my palette either. I usually mix my own black or gray by combining the green, blue red and then put some yellow in it. And you test it by putting a little bit of white in it. I use a lot of the cadmium red. I feel like that mixes to 
make so many great colors. Light or medium? Medium. Mm -hmm. I like the medium better. Yeah. Yeah. Just getting gray here that I like. Sorry to take so long, but. Usually, we usually break or break roughly around 8 o'clock. Okay. Or you let us know 8 o'clock or after 8. And then we usually close 9 o'clock or after. Okay. So you know, it doesn't matter. Um, so that's getting to 9.30. We have to be. Oh, no, I have to. Yeah. yeah. That's fine with me. Okay. So. So Tuesday is the last day of the Um, have some fun with the background too. It does not have to be you know, all the same. So maybe I want to change it up a little bit over here. Let's see that's not. Okay. So there's one, two. I don't want to lose my place. And I'm not going to be specific about every single leaf. That's the other thing that I, I talk to about my students. We're going to, I want to suggest what's going on here. I don't feel like I have to duplicate everything because, hey, if I wanted to duplicate everything, couldn't I just take a photograph and be done with it, right? And then I'd say, oh, there's, that's how the tulips looked. But that's not what I came for. So, you know, when I'm doing this, I'm also looking at the negative space and thinking, what kind of interesting shapes do I see? because when you mix cad green pale with the cad um, red medium, it's a real nice base for figure, for skin tone. Really? Yeah. And then you start adding your white to it. Is it cad green? Yep. It is. And it's cad green? What? I've never heard of that color. What, uh, it's, um, the maker? Uh, Actually, no, this one's Win Windsor Newton. Yeah. Windsor Newton? Cad green pale. Cad green pale. Yep. See how it's almost like electric? Oh, yeah. Yeah. There's another really, uh, there's another one too that, um, I'm trying to think who makes it, Cobalt Teal. And that's, oh, that's, another, that's a beautiful color. one, but you know, it's only made by, I forget if, it, if it's a gambling, I'm not sure. But that's another beautiful one. So we're talking about these tulips, and you know, you're looking at these greens, but these greens, there's a lot of yellow in them but there's a lot of, they're not really electric at all, they're, they're muted. So of course, you know, we have to keep putting that compliment in, which I keep going to that cat, that's my favorite. But again, I check it and I go, okay, well, I can put some of this in. Because now I'm gonna start kind of jumping around a little bit, not just saying, oh, I'm going from strictly light to dark, I mean dark to light. So I want to start to organize this a little bit so I can see that 
these come in here. This comes in here. The nice thing about oils too is they stay wet and you, you can then go back in. Uh, most of the questions will come from you, Joe, probably. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can hear Elise thinking, Mary. Do you see the smoke coming out? Yeah, I see the smoke. Yeah. I don't know about Bill yet. Arthur and what's your name again? Um, Pal, Mr. Well, see, Pal. me and me and Pal. Bill, we don't hate, so but, yeah, we don't really have still questions. Learn, but <laughs> still learn a lot from this because the colors treated the same way in mm -hmm. yeah. in photography. Yeah. See, I'm lucky I do both. Maybe not as well as you. I, I was, if she thinks that solvent's dangerous, she never worked on dot bombs. Well, yeah. <laughs> I, and I've been in both. Oh, too. yeah. I used <laughs> to have my own dark room. A real photographer could drink that stuff. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I, I was in a dark room in college. That was enough for me. Yeah. Oh, I, I mean, could never. I, could I mean, never days be. after days no. after days. Yeah, I know. No, no, no. Yeah. I'm also a professional photographer, Mary. So you I'm, are. You're oh, a, yeah. You have a lot of um, things yeah, that you do, huh? Different things I'm trying to sort out, yeah. Um, Fingers and a lot of pies. Yeah. yeah. Um, Yeah, well. That was the cadmiums that did. Oh, you um, when you did go to college, Mary, mm -hmm. um, at um, Massart. Massart, yeah, mm -hmm. on Brookline Ave or yep. on Longwood. They were both. They had a, they had the, um, the stone building that now I think is part of the Beth Israel. Beth Israel, yeah. So it was there, and then they had a building on Longwood, and they had another um, another building on Overland, I think it was. So it's it Overland Street, yeah. Yeah. They're on. It's it's mostly on Longwood right now, and on. Yeah, it's beautiful you know. now. Oh, it's incredible. That studio space they have for the kids in the dorms. I'm like, why wasn't I here that? Oh, oh my god. I actually I got here? kicked out of Matt's eye. You did? Why? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Probably because of the cadmium paint. No, um, kind of a long story. I'll make it real short. Because you escaped from the state hospital. Yeah, yeah I, I, escaped, I, escaped, right? I escaped. Yeah, I escaped from Danvers State Hospital. Um, in high school, I actually flunked my last year in art. This was because my teacher's husband died, and they asked, they didn't have substitute teachers the way they have these days. So they gave me the work to hand out to everybody, being as smart ass as I am. I didn't do it. So when she came back, I flunked out of, high, out of uh, art in high school. I used to do everything for everybody in high school. They always used to ask me, including the principal, would ask me for the stuff to do. So I had a bad. So when I went to Salem, when I, Salem State, when I went to Mass Art, I specifically went in to talk to the dean, and he wouldn't, he had nothing to do with it. He says, no, no, you can't, you have a C average. I said, yeah, I know, but, but, and he said, no, no, you can't, and this and that, and I was literally almost arguing with him, I was so mad. So later on, I got into the building because I worked for Beth Israel Beacon as medical uh, okay. for about 20 years, so. I taught him, huh? Yeah. I guess you showed him. I guess so. But I used to get down to Mass Art a lot and buy some stuff in their store. Yeah, yeah. It was, you know, I. 
um, I really enjoyed my time there, but it's so different now. I think if I if I was there now, it would be a whole different experience for me, or even not it, even now. It changes. Like I went to the museum school. Okay. And when I went there, I was trying to learn like what the old masters used to do. Right. So I was really big into that. And um, I worked during the day, so I was going to take the night class that they had. Right. And all of a sudden, they canceled the night class, and then we had day class. By the time I left my job looking for another job, I thought I'd take the classes in between. And they got rid of the day classes. Everything started going toward um, uh, more abstract and oh, no. stuff on that end, which I, at that time I wasn't enthused on until mm -hmm. I learned from the art. Boston tradition. But, and I really, <clears throat> every time I did anything in the school, they say, oh yeah, this is what we want, and this and that to all the other students, but they weren't teaching me anything. Because I started taking the fundamentals of art, so I just, I didn't like it in there. But so you just left. Yeah. <laughs> well, My love. I went, I did New England School of Photography the very first year they were open. Oh, you did? Yeah. yeah. It was the very first year they were open, and they accepted about twice as many students as they had equipment and dark rooms. Oh, jeez. So so ambitious, if right? you wanted dark room time, you had to used to have to go in at like wee hours of the morning yep. and, and everything. And it was, in a, and you haven't lived until you logged the uh, 8x10 view camera on uh, Boston Subway. So, oh. um, I did. <laughs> Five by seven, so. So, after one semester, I said, nah, you know what? It's a heck of a lot of money that I'm spending when I can't even get that from time. Especially traveling again. Yeah. If I lived in Boston, that would be one thing. You know, like I had a girlfriend that was in class with me, and she lived right in Boston. So she finished the year. I didn't even bother finishing the year. What I like is I went to Holio, they used to have professional photographers society in America. Mm -hmm. And um, no, that was P man, I'm PBS. PBS. P okay. PBA. Uh, yeah. That's different. No, they had one school out there in Holio, which is actually a nunnery. And you'd have these small little rooms to yourself. Uh -huh. You know, they had a bureau, a bed, and a clock. And then you'd go out during the day, you'd learn all classes, and all the top professionals would come out and teach you. Cause they'd come out there too, they'd stay there too, mm. like for a whole week. And all you do is associate with photography. Cool. The whole time. What's the New England Institute of Professional Photography? I think it was. Yeah. Mm. That's where I met um, Dean um, and um, a lot of other guys, uh, top professionals. The ones who used to shoot for, um, what's her name, Miss Diamonds. She knew, she knew um, my mind, my MS was getting caught in the way. Um, the kid there with the hat, he burned his hair on stage during the Packwoods War. Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson. Who she, he used to love her, what was her name? She had diamonds, she used to. Oh, yeah, I know you're talking about. Uh, Betty, not Betty Day. No, she had Carol Channing. Yeah. Uh, oh, um, Elizabeth Taylor. Elizabeth Taylor. Elizabeth Taylor. Yeah. Yeah. Her, her photographer. Friends. Her photographer, the photographers mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. I met him and everything. Franz Howells. And I wish. Yeah. <laughs> Franz Howells was at the mm -hmm. No, I. It was see, a long time ago, is what I'm saying. See, I, I was never into that kind of photography. I was more into <coughs> landscape yeah. photography at the time. So, Ansel Adams, Gallon Roll. They were my idols. Yeah. I went to a lecture by Gallen Roll. Yeah. Got him to sign a book that I had bought of his. I had like a library of his books. I'm going to go over and back and forth with some books. I have some yeah. signature books too. The first person was a TV commercial. Uh, I mean, a TV show. Shock of the New, it was called. It was about what abstract art was, because I was trying to find out mm -hmm. what abstract was all these years. Because I never liked it, but I was trying to find out about it. Yeah. Then I found out through, through when I went with Paul Ingersoll, but I have his book and he has it signed. So thought, "Shock of the New." It's, mm. it's a great book. No, I was never into abstract art, so I was never into abstract photography. I like I like to be able to identify what it is I'm shooting. I like, I like other fun. people. I know I like to have other people to be to look at something and know what they're looking at. What fun is that? 
you can still do real close macro and still be identifiable. I see just you got quite a stuff. And your photography's not bad either. Oh thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> I saw a woman. Um, this goes she, on like this all the time. She's uh, a photographer and she is, does scientific photography. Oh, the photographs yeah. are, you know, under the microscope. Yeah. But they were they were beautiful photographs. But they help the researchers understand what they're doing. It's just, mm -hmm. It was just yeah. gorgeous. I used to do a lot of that in the hospital for different things like that. And sometimes they just you never know what it is, but also you look at it and go, wow, which. Kind of got me into doing a lot of this stuff that I do today. So I'm, I do a lot of realism and classical mm -hmm. realism. Excuse me, I do a lot of classical realism, like I said. But I have more fun with abstract and people trying to guess what it is. And even in my my artwork, I like to have fun with people, as you can tell. And even in my artwork, I have a monogram that they have to find. It's like where's Waldo? Oh, really? In order to find <laughs> out. Yeah. So it's a, I like to have fun with everything. And all my all of my paintings are allegorical, whether it's, oh, abstract, okay. whether it's abstract or classical. So. And they take years. How many well, years? That's, that's years. It that's takes me years to do a to That's a because he doesn't sit down and work at it. He just, he's, okay, so he's doing so many different things. It's like five <coughs> minutes here, ten minutes there, you know. It's like he's jumping all over the world. But I know that feeling. Mm -hmm. I have a whole cabinet full of scrapbooking stuff. I have another whole cabinet full of jewelry making stuff, and then I have all my photography equipment. Yeah. That's your creative side coming out. Yeah. I like to write. Well, you know I write. Yeah. I've always written. My music. That I have no talent for. I have absolutely zero musical talent. But I just like to say a lot of things, so it's my way of expressing everything out. Mm -hmm. I like to listen to music. I have preferences, just like I have preferences in art. Now, I've been, oh, I've told you before, Van Gogh is my favorite. And Starry Night is my favorite one of his. He was under drugs when he did that, I know. Digitalis. Yeah, I know. Because they were trying to cure him. He just saw the world in a different way. Beautifully, I might add. Mm -hmm. If you ever really get up close that's, to this That's what always fascinated me about him is the way he saw the world yeah. was so different from everyone else yeah. back then. Yeah. And they didn't like him. They hated him. Oh, I know. Donna just told me the other night that if I die before her, she don't eat my brain to MIT. <laughs> nice. Because it works differently. It's supposed to work. <laughs> Mary, do you teach children in your art studio? Yes, I do. Oh, wow. Okay. I do. What age do you start at? Uh, six. Oh, wow. That's, oh, that's yeah. young enough for me. But you'd be amazed at what they do. They are something else. I'm telling you, I have a ball with them. They are great. They're very open to suggestions. They, re so. they really are. Yeah. They really are. That looks like almost... Hmm? Well, half finished. I don't yeah, know. yeah, it is. It's, it's, oh, it's coming along great along. We can take a break in a minute. Yeah, whatever you want. We're still watching it. Uh, talk away. It's easier for me. I think you're like a little more preoccupied. No, we are not watching you, though. No, I just... Don't underestimate. Painters just fascinate me because I don't paint myself. I don't paint, I don't draw, I don't sketch, I don't do any of that. My talent comes out of my eyes and my hands. Um, so it fascinates that's me to same, watch the process. That's the same thing. No. It is the same thing. But no, when you said you, it comes out of your eyes and hands. Right? No, it comes out my eyes, not my hands. Oh. My eyes through the camera. Oh. That's why she, when I laughed when she said she uses the viewfinder. No. I used to have all these different sizes of cardboard. Yeah. With the different oh, did you? Oh, yeah, yeah, with, with the square yeah. and all the different formats that I had cameras on. I had, had the cardboard cutouts for. Yeah. And I, when I'd find something I wanted to shoot, I'd do all the different cardboards to see which one I liked best, and that's the camera I picked. I made one. 
Oh my goodness, all this stuff. I made one that all this stuff. Um, you can either have digital yeah. format, mm -hmm. square yeah. format, or mm -hmm. standard well, I use aspect ratio. Even my digital camera as well. Yeah, I, you know the L brackets? Yeah. I still use the L brackets. Oh, yeah. Whether I'm photographing or I'm well, drawing. Yeah, the, the, the handiest L bracket is your fingers. <laughs> Well, no, because I'm holding my like, camera in one hand or a brush in the hand. Yeah. Like oh, wow. I just like to make it easy. Yeah. But my small camera, back. I have uh, the first camera. Yeah. Yeah. Some of the you can change the yeah, one. Jerry. Yeah. Which no, I do. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. But the format no, stays the anything. same. Yeah. On the, on the digital, I'm watching. I'm on the DSLR, the format always stays the same. But on my bridge camera, I can literally change the format. I can make it more panoramic, or I can make it almost square. It depends on what I'm shooting. How fast is that dry, Mary? Oh, this won't be dry. I brought you to. This is the oil like stays for a long, long time. So when you walk away from your pal up there, you can just leave those things alone. Yeah, I usually I have a pallet box that I use that. um I want to keep them. I put it in this box. It's a plastic lid. It's, it holds this. Mm -hmm. I want to it'll keep them. them. Yeah, so it'll keep them. Yeah. The colors I have a really hard time with drying is Grunbacher red. Yeah. And some white. They take forever. Oh, whites are always the yeah. longest. I actually have a fast dry white. Um, oh. This must be Jerry. Yeah. It helps when you're up. Do you remember from Aldo? Yeah. I get this stuff out with big two. Do you? Yeah. It's so buttery. It's really nice to know. Is there a way to speed up the process of drying or that's yeah, not a good thing? There are mediums that you can you can use. Um, but I I don't mind when I'm using oils. That's to me that's part of the process. Yeah, if you want the fast drying and use the colors. Right. Exactly. Uh, that's right. Well there's a bit too quick sometimes. Well, <laughs> but there's uh, but there's retarders that you can get with acrylics. Right. And there's expedients, I guess you can call it, that you can use with oils. Yeah. And Does then it change the application? Um, the yeah, because it's a little, it's not going to dry as fast naturally. Because uh, when you put acrylics down, basically they're down. Right. You know, oils, you want to free it up a bit. You want, you don't want it so that they, I don't know what the word be, blend it together, Mary, or more so what oils. Uh, the blending of it is better than acrylic. It's I, I think they do. Their, their viscosity is better. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Does the weather affect the, uh, the paints at all? Like summertime, does it affect the uh, the oils big time? Yeah, they get kind of runny in the sun. Yeah. <laughs> but um, in the cold, they can. They don't really harden up too much in the cold, but definitely in the in the yeah. summer when I'm out, like they are like. But that's okay because one of the things that I love is like they're like pudding. That's how I look at it. They're like yeah. they're so, yeah. mm, they just like, you know, you shouldn't eat them, but they like <laughs> that good to eat. So I'll take a little break. That's okay. eight o'clock. It, it depends on what you're painting. If it's cupcakes, then. You yeah, I know. Some things if you're interested. Have you ever tried it, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I have. Did you want to say something yeah. in the break? What do you no. think of the pigments? They're they're good. Um, I think the the higher quality paint you get, the better off that you you know. But I just love the.